Hey guys, uh, how's it going? Welcome to Clown Vapes channel. Uh, here we are for another vlog. Uh, hopefully I get through this one pretty quick because I'm not going to lie, I'm getting really tired. Uh, it's been a busy, busy day. I got vape mats out. Here, let me show you guys because I still have one with me. But yeah, those those are the vape mats right there. I really think they came out really, really awesome. And I am really wanting to get some more to put up on the site. And if you guys are interested, please let me know. That way for sure I can get some. Because, uh, yeah. Look at that. It just looks so cool. It's upside down. Why didn't anybody tell me it was upside down? You guys are evil. Seriously, look at that. Just so awesome. There you go. With all the guys from the Omis, all their names, all of the things, and that kind of thing. And uh, I also, uh, if you're interested also in Clown Vapes ones, I do have one. It's sitting on this side of my desk covered in stuff already. So I don't even want to move everything to show you. Maybe I'll take a minute in, uh, later on in the video to do it. But for now, the yeah, I love how it came out. It came out awesome. Here, let me let me look up a picture real quick. Here you go. That is the uh, Clown Vapes vape mat right there. And if you guys are interested in either one, let me know. Like I said, if I could get some more meat out, I will. But for now, that's kind of where we're at. So yeah yeah uh how you guys been hopefully it's been a good week uh we are as of this video being released posted we are literally five days away depending which day you celebrate like my family we celebrate the 24th most families celebrate the 25th it just kind of falls on which day you celebrate the most and for me it is on the 24th being that I am saying that right now, and I'll probably repeat myself at the end of the video, and this will be repeated on Friday. Um, I will not be recording videos next week. Maybe I'll try to make time for at least a review, but I'm not even sure on that. We'll see how things go. But as far as I know, I will be taking off next Monday, so because Monday is my recording day, so I will not have videos out. Uh, at least vlog-wise, I'll try to make at least a review video for you guys. We will see. Depends on what I have time for. So with that being said, uh, let's get the show started. We're going to do some what I've been vaping, some av news and advocacy. I got some stuff for you guys. Um, I got the, whatchamacallit. Then we're going to do some beer, as always. And yeah, we're just going to wrap that up and call it a day. Uh, seriously, if you guys got any questions or anything, please email me at clownvapes at gmail.com for either the uh, Wolf Bite show on Vape Radio or for me to answer anything here on camera. I am more than welcome to do that. I, you are more welcome to do that. I will more than happily do that. How about that? That feels like better wording. All right, so let's move on to so what I've been vaping. And yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. So what I've been vaping, uh, we're going to move through a very extensive buffet this week. I don't kind of really care. Uh, I will like to start with what on the what I've been vaping, mostly because this product has been in my what I've been vaping. Not in a while, but it was an important one in my earlier videos, and they're still very important to me. I. Uh, I would like to send out my thoughts and all that kind of thing and prayers. I am not a religious person, so I feel awkward saying that. But to uh, James, the uh, owner and creator of Rig Mods, uh, he passed away this week. And it's a sad day in that sense. Uh, yeah, they do have a GoFundMe going on to help with all his expenses and all that kind of thing. Because, you know, when somebody passes, especially if you don't, you're not prepared it get does get very expensive and all that kind of thing. So I will post that in the links down below if you guys want to go check out the GoFundMe and help uh, with with all that kind of thing. Um, all right, so let's move on to some happier things. Uh, all right, first we're going to start with this guy. I got me a Watofo Recurve mod. 
I'm not going to lie. I'm liking the ergonomical sense of it. How it holds in the hands. How it squonks at the bottle down here. And then on top of that, I got the Entheon RDA by Cyclone Mods. Cyclone? Is it Cyclone? No, it's not Cyclone. Yeah, either way. Uh, yeah, it's a really good vape. In that, I have a Ripe Collection Kiwi Dragonberry, which I will say this is a really good juice. I am enjoying the hell out of it. It's very flavorful, very delightful. And, I mean, the coil I have in here is a point two. And it is ripping and roaring. I mean, look, listen, listen to that. Just as whole setup combo. Loving that idea of a uh, 21700 in there. So, yeah. Just awesomeness all around. All right. Uh, up next, we got the, the uh, Pulse X with the uh, Pulse X RDA. The whole setup kit thing. Really liking it. I am enjoying the hell out of it. In that, I have a Hometown Heroes Lemon Bar from their uh, Legit line. Which, uh, last time I saw something on that, they changed their labeling and things like that. But they are still the same exact liquid. So, you just got to look through their uh, catalog and see which one it is if you guys want to give it a try. As far as lemons go, I feel this is the most uh, not so pungent lemon. Like, if we were to put them in scales from, like, how I like my lemon juices, I have Marcellus. I have tried Marcellus. I have tried the Hometown Heroes. I have tried the Lemongrass Cake from Danish. And I have tried Clouds of Mass Destruction Key Lime Pie, and which is the Toxic Shock. And even I have mixed my own Key Lime Pie before. And I will put it in this order. If you want something strong and very lemony, Clouds of Mass Destruction. Then uh, mine, if I can get a hold of some ingredients, I will probably be releasing one in the summer. We will see. Then after that, I would say Marcellus, then Hometown Hero in like strengths and how like heavy they are. And Lemongrass is somewhere in that mix of those last two. Uh, it's like a weird one because it does. It is like a different. It tastes like lemon something or other, like a lemon cake. But it's not within the same realm, if that makes any sense. So that's how it goes. It's just more how lemony you want it. If you want it super uber lemony, I just toxic shock. I mean, I'm sorry, but brother went crazy on that lemon and he loves that lemon. All right. So, again, really good juice. I'm liking this whole setup and all that kind of thing. Really, really awesome. All right, so next I have my uh, trusty Warlock's Hammer. Warlock's Hammer. With the uh, Goon on top, DHD drip tip. <coughs> All right, DHD drip tip on there. And in that, I got a coil turd, a liquid for vaping, peach, peach tea lemonade. And uh, I also managed when we had him on the Omics, he had a code for us on there. And uh, I managed to pick up that juice, pick up these coils with the code. Uh, again, dude, thank you so much. Let's see if this thing will focus. There you go. So those are some quad core aliens. And uh, I got these because James really recommended that I give them a try. I'm not going to lie, guys. Oh, my God. This this is uh, some really, really crazy stuff. Uh, I am enjoying it. It's really good juice. The coils are really banging. And if you guys haven't given it a try, look it up. I do have the juice on my site. Hint, hint. Uh, if you guys want to go check it out. And, uh, yeah. Just really, really all just has made this setup so complete. Alrighty, up next I have the uh, Goon 25 DHD color changing drip tip. It goes from this color to red. All on top of the Mod Defines Lyra, Lyra, whatever this thing was called. Uh, I've been wanting one since they came out back in like March, I think they came out. I remember seeing Vic's review back then. I wanted one. I actually wanted to do a review on it. I might still. I'm not sure. 
I am going to do a series of late to the party, which is kind of like me going through a bunch of old gear that I never got around to trying or uh, buying it to see if I like them or not. So we'll see if this one falls into that category. I mean, let me know. Comments. Seriously. And in that, I have uh, Strawbreezy. 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 From uh, Wake Mod Co. It's really good juice. Uh, I will say the only downside to it is that, like, uh, it does this one thing that whipped cream tends to do is that it leaves that weird film in my mouth, which I guess it makes it realistic. But I'm just not a fan of that idea. I mean, I make my own strawberries and cream and it doesn't do that. So... It just throws me off completely. I've tried other strawberries and cream and strawberries and custard and all that kind of stuff before. And this is the only one that has done that. So it's really, really weird. Like, yeah, was it the witch, witch brews? Should I remember what that one's called? I think it's like uh, the, because it's not Tempting Gretel. That's the Skittles one. That one's actually a really good juice too. Now, Ool, Tempting Witch? Let me see. Give me a second. Okay, so I couldn't find it. I am very sorry. Uh, yeah. Anyways, let's just continue. Uh, again, like I was saying, it's a good juice, but it does leave that weird film in my mouth. So. Then uh, up next, G Class, Elitist F, Elitist A F, right there. So G Class F P Tank. And in that, I got a uh, Marcellus, which I'm almost out of. Sad day, I know, but whatever. We continue, we press on. I had like a day where all I was vaping was different styles of lemon. And I've come to realize that lemon is my favorite juice style. Even though I don't even like, like I said, I don't, in my line, I don't even have a lemon. It's the awkwardest thing ever. So to me, it's one of those weird ones. Uh, so, uh, last weekend, not this past weekend that just passed, but the weekend of the 8th, I guess you want to call it. I lost my, my Grim Green Edition Mi Pod, so I got a replacement. I have this guy for now. Hopefully, uh, I did message them, and hopefully we'll see if I could get a replacement. Or uh, they could sell me a replacement, basically. Um, so, yeah, in that, I have... From uh, Vape 100 Cream Collection, I have, what is this called? Cereal Cream. I'm liking the juice. It's pretty good. Not sure I like the name. I don't know. That whole cream thing bothers me for some reason, but whatever. It, it's a weird thing, but cheers. Really, really good setup. All right, so up next, uh, again, uh, it was another thing I lost, so I had to get a replacement, my zero. I lost my blue one, so I got a replacement, so I have the, the black one now, and in that is always Country Clouds. And, uh, yeah, that was, I don't know why, but I lost two of my setups. I have no idea where they're at, and I've been looking for them for days, and I was like, I want my pod systems back, so I'm going to get some replacements. And lastly, store and air. A lot of people really didn't like this thing. I am actually a fan of this. And in that, I have a, uh, what is this again? Strawberry cream cake. So again, strawberries and cream. So yeah, really, I'm liking the juice for like 50 milligram. It's not that like harsh. I could actually vape it very easily. And it doesn't give me that like head, like floaty head kind of thing from when you do overdo the nick and all that kind of thing. But it is what it is. All right. So, yeah. Awesome flavor on all my systems and pods and all, all the, like, setups I got going on right now. This is actually, like, uh, my my stuff that, like, I, I use daily at the moment and all that kind of thing. I'm trying to rotate more things in and move things around. But I'm also having to work on reviews and things that I'm trying to review and this and that. So, it's just, all, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. Uh, alrighty. So that was, that was what I've been vaping. Let's move on to some news and advocacy. Let's do it. All right, guys. So, uh, news and advocacy. I do have some articles I wanted to like go through and talk about and all that kind of thing. So let's just, uh, jump into it kind of thing. All right. So, uh, as always, I always, um, 
as like I recommend, always keep up with local news. Pay attention to what's going on in your backyard, in your neighborhood, and that kind of thing. And I mean, this one kind of hits close to home. Not exactly home, but pretty damn close. Uh, Decatur is no longer welcoming product uh, tobacco products at city parks, which means no vaping in public parks. If you, you know, we still are considered a tobacco product. So we, uh, you know, so vaping in public parks is no longer welcome, which means you can't vape in a public park. And it's one of those weird double-edged swords for me. And I mean, let me read the article real quick and I'll explain what I mean by that. All right. So the wise the Weiss County Messenger reports that Decatur, Texas, no longer welcomes tobacco products at a city at city parks. The park impacted include Harmon, Kenny Renshaw, Hollis, and Sue Jones, Luita Willis, Willis, and Melba Doyle Parks. Last week, Decatur City Council unanimously approved an ordinance to ban smoking and the use of smokeless tobacco products at all city parks this ban includes vaping cigarettes cigars pipes smokeless tobacco the idea for the ordinance was brought to the city council by resident katie morris in august morris explained that during the recent youth baseball league season she experienced the effect of secondhand smoking at Harmon park sitting through the games and Practices where adults were smoking was as was unenjoyable to say the least, she said. People choose light up along song alongside the field, behind the dugouts where the kids were sitting waiting to play, by the bathrooms and on Harmon Park playground, with really no thought about who was around them or children in front of them. I could get up to move, but the kids could not. The kids on the playground could not could have left to get away from the smoke, but the playground is for children, so they have they shouldn't have they shouldn't have to leave. Mayor Martin Wardruff sig- signed no signaled his support for the ordinance at a previous meeting where the ordinance was discussed. We're trying to prevent public health problems and encourage the improvement health as a result of that Woodruff said in October council meeting the first reading of the public hearing was held in November 26 city council meeting to meeting but not citizen but no citizens spoke in favor against the new ordinance Okay, so, but no citizens spoke in favor of or against the new ordinance. Monday, Monday's actions after a second reading of the ordinance. Signs about the new ordinance will be placed at parks to alert visitors about tobacco ban. The new ordinance includes a fine up to $500 per violation. And then they have, uh, Angela Garrity posted this on Vape News. She also has a, uh, link to the full article if you guys want to read further beyond that but what i meant by uh i feel kind of like it's a double-edged sword i i'm still on the idea that we need to push that vaping is not a tobacco product that it's own entity that it needs to be something different but with that being said we we still have to be courteous of people i mean secondhand smoke so far as any study that has been shown up until this point is not a relevant thing when it comes to vaping. So that kind of does throw it out the window, but we still do have to be courteous. You can't just be blowing clouds in people's faces. So, I mean, why the hell would you want to do that to somebody? You know, it it's, I'm like, I've said several times, don't be a dick. And that just includes the whole idea of if you're going to be out in a park somewhere, like I, I'll take like a small pod system or something like that whenever I go to a park and I'll blow like really tiny clouds. Even like I'll try to still be like something like that in a public park because I don't want to be that person that puts a very negative face on vaping. 
I don't want to bring attention to vaping in a negative manner. And we still need to fight to be able to remove vaping from being called a tobacco product product and have it separated from it and that whole situation. But at the same time, we can't, it's kind of hard to dispute, you know, the fact that we're not inconsiderate assholes if we are out in public blowing clouds. So, you know, please help out the cause. Alrighty, so if you live in Decatur, $500 if you light up or vape or spit. It's one of those three. Alrighty, so next article. Uh, this was released on the uh, 13th, so this is last Thursday. The The FDA has released, uh, has reminded manufacturers of the annual registration listing deadline. So we are on that deadline list yet again. All right, so the U.S. the U.S. Food and Drug Administration recently reached out to manufacturers of tobacco products as well as deemed tobacco products about the annual deadline for registration and listing of products. That deadline is December 31st, 2018. The FDA further reminds manufacturers that the newly changed products must be re-registered and relisted. However, Products which have not been introduced to the change since 2017's deadline should not be resubmitted. Manufacturers who may require guidance from U.S. from the FDA can reach out to them per the following guidance. Guidance: the tobacco registration uh, and product listing in- instructions page, including examples of completed registration and listing forms, and step-by-step guides. For users accessing the FDA un- Unified Registration and Listing Systems, or FURLs, manufacturers can also read the guidelines for the industry registration and product listings for owners and operating domestic products establishment for, for more information. There are two links that will take you directly to the thing. If you are a manufacturer that has not registered and really needs to especially when it comes to e-liquids e-liquids is the one that they're really cracking down on the most and if you don't want to see your company go away or if you want to stay maverick uh you know don't register but if you do want to you know look more legitimate in the eyes of a governing body just go ahead and register the i will post a link to the article which has links to where to go and just go do that real quick i mean it is what it is i mean We have to play ball up until a certain point. And I really, I don't know. It's one of those things where I I am a firm believer of less government is better. But right now, it's just the way things are. All right. So, uh, again, more more and more parks. They're, They're trying to, like, make sure that we're not on parks. And Raleigh, North Carolina is doing the same thing. I think I pronounced that right. Not clouds. If you watch this, let me know. Uh, yeah, uh, the, I could read it, but it just falls under the same, all the same stuff. I mean, they're trying to keep, you know, smokers away from parks because there's people and this and that. And that just falls into what the first article. If you're going to do something like that, I mean, stealth vape, simple, easy, uh, Get you one of these guys. They they are very inexpensive. And you could even control how much you got going on. Let's see. Let's just put it at the lowest setting. This is the lowest setting on this. Think about that. Versus. This is actually one of my smaller atomizers. But yeah, I'm all itchy. Um, let me see. Let's let, actually let's just read it. Let, I'm gonna just go ahead and read it. Uh, Raleigh Parks go smoke free. 
Two parks previously exempted from smoke smoking bans in Raleigh, North Carolina, are now included in the ban. The city council meeting on December 4th eliminates smoking within all city parks in the capital city. Parks in Raleigh have been smoke-free for seven years except downtown parks of Nash Square and Moore Park. City Council enacted Ordinance 2011-834 to prohibit smoking in certain parks and greenway areas in order to better protect public health and reduce litter in those areas. Okay, I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to say this much. I, as an ex-smoker and somebody that smoked while I did this, I used to work in an apartment complex and they used to give me a five gallon drum every morning to go fill it up with cigarette butts. You know what I would do? I would fill two of those fuckers up with cigarette butts every morning. It wasn't even like over the weekend because I didn't work over the weekend. It wasn't like because I missed the day or something. No, every motherfucking day. And I will say that is one thing that just frustrated me that. Whenever, like, I, when I was a smoker, I would put out the cigarette and find the nearest trash can because I couldn't deal with the idea of cigarette butts everywhere. That was about the most frustrating thing ever, and I am glad I'm, I'm not part of that problem anymore. Just, just saying. Uh, in 2012, City Council extended the prohibition on smoking to transit areas such as, but exclusive to, Moore Park Transit Station via Ordinance 2012-121. The efforts increased smoking in Moore Square, which impacted the user experience and increasing litter. The ban does not specifically include the using of vaping devices. However, the city could revisit the ban, include non-combustible in a revision. Uh, a 12, mini, 12 million dollar renovation of Moore Square invoked the modification of Raleigh city code. This is a major reinvestment into the historic downtown dist district with the goal of providing a premier urban park for all the investment encouraged use by the burgoing downtown population as their neighborhood parks, neighborhood park, as well as enchantments to in Enhancements to encourage use as a destination event space. Nash Square has been studied for future investments and enhancements for the user experience. The city officials have discussed upgrade Nashville Square as well. Raleigh is the second most populous city in the state of North Carolina with an estimated population of just under 465,000 residents. So if you want to read more, there's a link and you guys can check it out. I will post the link to this article and you guys can follow the the, the trail. Well, like I said, they, they haven't gotten rid of vaping. So if you want to keep vaping in Raleigh, North Carolina parks and make sure we are still allowed to vape. There. 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 And that should be really a great deal of help to not making more issues for us. Even a stig. Here, let me let me just you know find a even one of these. A stig. These are disposable. And yeah, I mean sorry, I'm so itchy right now. Uh one of these, not that big a deal. They are very tiny, very disposable, and So, you know, like I said, cloud production isn't big on it and you could still get your nicotine. You still get like what you need out of it. So these are other options that you guys can use. But like I said, pod systems, if you're going to be out in public, use something small, a mouth to lung set up a pod system, which are mouth to lung for the most part. They don't put out big clouds. You don't disrupt, you know, peace and all that kind of thing. And you don't make vaping look bad. All right, so this last article, let me see, because I want to make sure there's not some important dates. I'll be right back. Alrighty, so the last bit, I will just post a link down below. Uh, they're doing a uh, waffle type of thing 
where you can put in money towards the waffle. You'll win some really fun stuff. They have DHC drip tips, coil turd coils. They have cyclone mods, you know, the Entheon, the Citadel, the Hadley, those guys. Uh, they're doing giveaways with a bunch of stuff, a bunch, a bunch of stuff. And you donate money towards the waffle. You win something, but the money is donated towards Toys for Tots, which, hey, everybody wins in that situation. You want to talk about, you know, doing something for the community. That is a great one. I will post a link down below and you guys can just check it out and... If you want to jump in, I think they're still running it. I'm not sure. I didn't see anything on the time sensitivity. If they aren't, I am sorry. But if anything, if you still are able to do it, seriously, check them out. It's a great cause. All right. So um, lastly, we are going to move into some beer. Yeah, some beer. And yeah, let's do it. All right, so beer. Let's do this. Uh, some beer. Uh, we have today Commotion American Pale Ale by Great, Great Raft Brewery. Bold, generously hopped, balanced drink real beer. That is a statement right there. Uh, they are from Shreveport, Louisiana. And it has their zip code, that kind of thing. It's a 5.5 by volume. IBUs is 49, which is bitter units. I had to learn that one like the hard way a while back. It's a 12 ounce can. I don't remember the price point on the six pack. I bought this as an individual can where I get my beer. I tend to just buy like individual cans because if I don't like the beer, I'm not going to want to have a six pack sitting around. So this just makes my life and existence a little easier. And that kind of thing. So let's see any other information you guys might want no uh doesn't even have a brew date it does not have a brew date all right i couldn't find one at least all right so let's give this an open and let's let's check it out We got the, our trusty glass here. Okay, so far that is looking hazy. It's got a nice head to it, that kind of thing. It's got a very, uh, like a pale orange color. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm going to see if uh, like, the color tones down here in a bit or not. Uh, let's go in for for a smell. See what the uh, aroma is. It's got a nice orange fruity kind of flavor, like fruity note to it. You can smell the hops. It reminds me like it's it's an American IPA basically. It's a pale ale, but it's in the American style, which is not to be confused to like stuff like Budweiser and stuff. That's actually that is. I actually learned this a while back, but uh, American beers are actually a very watered down, uh, well, they're lagers, but they're a watered down version of German beers. When German immigrants first moved here, they were trying to reproduce their beer the way they like to drink it. And they don't really like the, like the heavy stouts and the porters and things like that. That's more like a Western European kind of thing. So when they were trying to use the same ingredients that they used back in Germany, like the hops that they used in Germany and things like that, they were not as available and the stuff they got here was a little too bitter. So that's when they started getting into like things more like, uh, like oats and things like that instead of wheat. Yeah. It just turns into this weird thing. I, I actually, I'll post a link to that video. It's a very interesting video. It's on YouTube. And, uh, I thought it was really interesting cause I, I like beer and I'm a beer guy. And that was really cool to know. So, yeah, the haziness hasn't gone away. Still really hazy. It reminds me of, like, melon juice. If you guys have ever had melon juice, you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go for a taste. Let's see how this tastes. I don't know how I feel about that. 
like it's beer and like that orange note that i can smell isn't in the taste it really isn't you can taste the hops oh it's a really weird one uh like i said ales and pale ales aren't really my thing my thing is more like stouts maybe some porters i have gotten into belgians and even then i'm still weird about those uh, it's not like it's a hit or miss with me on those. It's not like most stouts, which I've learned there's a hit or miss on stouts. Last week's video let me know that there's a hit or miss on stouts, which that sucked. And I apologize to everybody who watched that video and had to like watch me just go ah, for like two minutes and then gave, I gave up on it. Uh, Jacoby gave me shit for it and it was funny. <laughs> All right, so up first I got the... Uh, I got coil turd peach tea lemonade. Just feel like a nice, uh, well balanced fruit. Fruit vape would work really well with this. When it comes to like something more in, in the lighter side, you want to go with more like a fruit vape, and those tend to pair up really amazing with, with whatever beer you got. So we're gonna try that. Let's see. See, that brought out that orange note a little bit more. I could taste the orange more. It could be from the pe from the lemonade portion of the peach tea juice. And that whistled a second ago. I'm so sorry if that got loud. But it did bring out that orange note a little bit more. It's more in your face. Hmm. That was a pretty good one. Uh, there's a couple more things I want to try out. Next, we're going to do the uh, ripe the ripe 100 uh kiwi dragonberry see how that one goes because i don't know like i said a good fruit vape will pair up really good like i am excited to try this one now that i tried it with the peach tea lemonade this one is uh from the gathering vape lounge witches brew uh naul that one i'm saving that one for last because i know that one's gonna be just i don't even know how to do that properly but i really think that one's gonna be really good with it so let's give that a try well, this is the dragonberry. I gave it more of a sourness. I don't know. I don't know how I would. I don't. Hmm. Something just hit in the back of my palate, and I'm not really sure what it is. But I feel that 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 one didn't really pair up all that well. Like the like the lemonade did. The lemonade kind of gave it a bit of a more sweetness. It took away from the bitter in it because like ipas apas whatever you want to call them they tend to have uh bitterness that's why they give you a number for the bitter bitter units see it's that number right there the ibus because it does let you know how bitter it's going to be like dogfish uh 121 120 minutes i can't do that at all not my thing i don't like it it's just no it's an expensive beer that tastes really gross to me so it's one of those weird ones that no, but this I'm actually I'm enjoying it. It's really well balanced in its taste. It doesn't it's not pungent. It's a really good starting point for like if you're wanting to go into pale ales. This is actually a really good point to start at. Not going to lie. I'm enjoying this beer. Uh, let's see what up next. We're going to do up next this one, which in here I have my own fruit basket and we'll see how that pairs up. This has like a uh, peach. Uh, Blueberry, strawberry, apple kind of mixture. So let's give it a try. See, that brought up the, the hoppiness in the beer. That actually, it, it like, it made the bitterness come out a little bit more. And I'm still tasting it here. It does linger in the palate a little bit. Uh, I forget what the term, like the actual term is for that. I'm playing with the vape. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember what the term is for it, but there is an actual term for when like beer lingers in your palate. If you guys know, or if I can remember, I'll leave a comment down below about it. If not, you guys comment. Let me remind me what the hell it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. It does bring out the bitterness. So if you 
don't like a bitter beer, I for sure don't recommend my juice. If you're okay with bitterness coming out, hey, get get a bottle of a uh, of a uh, fruit basket whenever I have it up on the site. Right now, I'm working on supplies. Uh, with Christmas and all that, money is tight. Not gonna lie. So it's been a minute since I've ate that. So very happy about that. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's clear that out. All right, so next we're going to go with Na'ul, which I am excited about this. I feel like this one's going to be good. I'm trying to think of anything else I have that could do such a good job. All right, uh, no. So we're going to go with Na'ul. Well, actually, uh, yeah, let me see. Does this thing, this thing have anything? Uh, it doesn't even have batteries. All right, we're gonna mess with one more thing, but let's do this one real quick, and we'll we'll uh, move on to the other thing I want to do real quick. All right. See, there it is. Now, ooh, it really brought out the uh, some of the extra flavor in there. It made it a little bit more uh, more sweeter. Brings out that orange note, but again, it's because it's mixing in with the citrus that's already in the juice. But I really think there's a citrus note in there that you can't taste otherwise. So it does turn into one of those things. All right, so this last one is Desert Basket. If you guys go back through my uh, my list, eh, you guys could actually see the tutorial video on how to make this juice, and you guys can make it for yourself and try it out with the beer. All right, so... Lastly, it's the Desert Basket. Not going to lie, that looks really cool. I'm liking that. That That is pretty dope. That just made it a straight up IPA. Wow, that, that like uh, enhanced the flavor of it. It did bring up the bitterness a little bit. The hops are more present. So if you guys like, like I said, if you like a hoppy beer, my juices apparently are meant for that. But if you want something more toned down, which is brew, not all get it. Uh, Mark and Amy do awesome, awesome work when it comes to their box mods, when it comes to their juices, go check them out. If not coil turd, go check his juice out. I do have it on my site at the moment. So there, there's places to get it. I mean, this beer is actually really good. I'm, I'm actually starting to feel it a little bit. I did eat earlier, so I'm not doing this on an empty stomach like I normally do. But I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. All right, so that was, uh, what was this again? Uh, commotion from Great Raft Brewing. If you guys want to go check them out. I want to say it's like $10 for the, for the Sixer. Usually the price line for, for something that comes in a can and they come in like a nice little sixer. Uh, yeah, but that, that was beer. Uh, as always, check me out on social media. I am on clownvapes.com, clown vapes, and clown crew and vaping with the omies on uh, Facebook. We do have the Facebook, uh, the Instagram vaping with the omies page. You guys want to follow us on there and stay up to date because we tend to post on there what exactly is going on with the show. And then uh, Clown Vapes on Instagram for myself. Go check out all the other guys. We have links to them constantly. We tag each other on everything. So there's a way to get a hold of Swaggins, of Frames, of uh, Oh My Lanta, Poon Sauce, and Kuwaiti Vapors, and our honorary uh, Omi, Mr. Uh, clouds of mass destruction which is our sponsor for the show so if you guys want to really go check out any of their stuff anything they got going on go check out frames' channel dude is killing it with the review game and i wonder if he's gonna start vlogging or not i mean hopefully he he figures out stuff that he could do for his channel and stuff but seriously help him grow get him more subs and uh that kind of thing so what else 
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention in the uh, news and advocacy thing, uh, Nick Green, Mr. Grim Green, go check out the 510 report. He has posted some really crucial, important messages in the 510 report. Uh, his videos of last week, he posted something that was really, really, really in depth on if you want to know why we are being attacked from so many fronts when it comes to government, when it comes to pharmaceutical companies, uh, tobacco companies, where we actually stand in the grand scheme of these things as vapors. And uh, today being the Wednesday 19th when he posts the 510, if you guys haven't checked it out yet or if it hasn't come out yet, but try to be aware and put on some notifications to check out the second half of that video. He, It's one of those, I'm sorry for like using such a cliche thing but truth bombs man it really does turn into that and just watch it see what you think and get get informed on why things happen the way they do i mean it's it's very crude to say it that way but that is the the fact of it all so yeah go check them out go check out those videos and inform yourself please uh as always casa.org not blowing smoke i quit smoking by vaping.com if you're a business safada, try to push them into doing, being more active and doing more and seeing what we can do as a community. Uh, I was saying uh, kind of like spoilers to a point, but not, I just feel like I have to say this. But this week on the Wolf Bite, we did talk about, you know, what can we do to push advocacy? And I feel that educating non-hobbyists is an important one. And then educating non-vapers. Because most non-vapers just follow whatever they see on the news. They don't research any of this. They see it as an evil that bad things come from it and this and that. But they don't understand that we ourselves as vapers have used all these devices and products and such things to stay off of cigarettes. I mean, I am cigarette free for about... Uh, I want to say four years now. I've been vaping for six and it took me a while to get there, but I have been cigarette free for four years. If that really doesn't say anything, let, I mean, cigarette free for four years. I haven't had a craving for cigarettes. I've gotten to a point where a freshly lit cigarette smells fine to me. It reminds me of a lot of stuff and I get a weird and nostalgic moment in there, but then it turns into this very disgusting thing to me. So Keep flavors alive and all that kind of thing. And as Kevin Skipper always said it, and I will keep repeating myself on this, you don't have to do everything, but you have to do something. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being on here for another vlog. And we'll catch you guys next week. Or uh, not next week, because I'm going to be on vacation next week for the vlog for sure. I will try to get a review out if I can. But for the most part, I will be on vacation next week. Uh... Christmas is on Monday, and that's my family time. And I apologize, but my family is a bit more important to me. Because without them, I'm not here. All right, so I'll catch you guys later. Thank you for joining the show. And as always, mix on, vape on.